So why would anybody do an engine swap on a lawnmower? Say you have an old lawnmower in your garage and the engine still runs great, but the rest of the mower is in pretty rough shape. Well, that would be a good reason to do an engine swap. If you wanted more of a reason to do an engine swap, all you'd have to do is take the engine off and get a real good look at the deck. And if yours looks as rough as this one, then you might be in the market for a different deck on which to put that engine you like so much. But why even bother? And more importantly, how difficult is it? In today's video, we look at this Toro lawnmower and the problem is that it won't start. And the reason is pretty obvious. But if you didn't know, it had a slow oil leak which led to a scored cylinder wall and low engine compression. Now I've already fixed this mower and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of this video. I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about why someone would even want to swap engines versus buying a brand new mower. Now the biggest reason why you'd want to do an engine swap is pretty simple money. If you hadn't looked lately, the price for a new lawnmower is a lot higher than it used to be only a few years ago. I can remember only a handful of years ago, not 10 years ago, when you could have gotten a no frills plain Jane push mower for right around $100. And if you wanted to go back a lot further, you could have gotten the same mower for half that amount. And if you want a good decent mower now, expect to pay well over $400. So the idea of combining a good engine from a broken mower and putting it on a good mowing deck from another one makes a lot of sense. One of the biggest hurdles is finding a good engine to put on the mowing deck of your choice. In this case, both of these mowers were free and found online using a website. Now the Toro was beyond repair as far as the engine goes and the Black Max was fixable, but I would have had to spend well over $100 to get it working well enough to be sold as a working unit. Now I could have converted it to a push mower, but I would have made less money on it. In my case, the Tecumseh engine wouldn't start because of low compression, and the Honda engine from the Black Max runs, but it's not 100% either. However, once I put it on the Toro's mowing deck, I'll at least have a working machine I can sell. Yes, it's going to be a bit of a Frankenstein's monster of a mower, but I'll price it accordingly. Now, most people don't care that it's been rebuilt. They only care that they get a great working mower for a good price. Another concern you might have to deal with is the blade adapters and the pulleys. Fortunately, the adapters for these two are about the same dimensionally, which will help out the blade location in relation to the bottom of the deck. The other concern is, of course, the size of the shaft on both engines. So you need to be aware of the diameter of the shaft because not all of them are the same. Now, most engines that are fitted to mowers that have self-propel have a one-inch shaft, while the engines that are fitted to push mowers typically have smaller shafts. If you're looking for an engine for your self-propelled mower, make sure to find out that it came off a self-propelled mower. The same goes for a push mower. Make sure the donor is also a push mower. Now you are going to find the rare occasion where a small shaft engine will be fitted to a mower that has self-propel. And if you do, consider yourself lucky because it means you have a blade adapter that's meant for the smaller shaft and yet has a pulley so it can be used for a self-propel mower. I had to learn this the hard way, but it just means you'll have to find a different engine. The other issue that you might run into is the number of mounting points on the engine. Now some engines only have three mounting points while others have four. Now this might seem like a big deal but it's never stopped me from drilling holes into the deck to make new mounting points that way the engine will be secure to the deck. Also, be aware that the bolts themselves are not the same between different engines. Some might be larger while others might be a different thread pitch. So always transfer the bolts along with the engine to the other deck. Now don't be surprised if the head of the bolts break off while removing them. And if they do, you'll have to drill them out and chase the threads. 
You'll also have to be aware that the blade adapters only want a certain type of blade to be mounted to it. So if for some reason you have to swap adapters, you might also have to swap blades as well. This may not seem like a big deal, but it gets pretty interesting if you have a special blade or if you have a clutch on that blade. The other issue you could run into is the brake cable. Now some cables are very short because they connect to the engine closer to the handlebar and if the engine you're swapping in has its mounting point somewhere else, the short cable might not be able to reach it. If possible, you might have to swap cables as well, but if that's not possible, you might have to get a different cable. I haven't mentioned the other reason why you should swap engines on your mower. If money is not the type of motivation you need to do this job, what about a sense of pride? Now working with your hands to accomplish a goal is something that I find very rewarding. Now we're all different and you may not see it that way, but that's the way I feel after getting this job done. So the engine started and it was surging a bit until the gasoline was able to go through the carb. Now the self propel kind of works but luckily on this particular mower the cable can be adjusted to make it work better. I'll make my adjustments and we'll see if it improves any. So the self-propel works a lot better now, but there are a few strange noises we need to take a look at. However, that's a lot better than where we started at. Originally we had two mowers that either didn't work or needed a lot of money to fix, but after swapping the engines we now have a functioning mower that we can now work with. Now I don't think an engine swap is the answer for all mower issues because sourcing another engine is a real hassle, but I certainly think it's worth it especially when it works out in the end. So what happens to the other mower's deck and engine? Unfortunately that's a whole different story I'll have to address later on in a different video. So my question is, would you even consider doing an engine swap? Now it's really not that difficult to do because you're basically just unbolting two engines and deciding which one you're going to bolt back up. Or do you think it's better left to someone with more experience? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.